Hello and welcome to this lesson on transistors. By the end of this lesson you should be able to do these three things. Describe what a transistor is, explain how a transistor works, and for the higher tier, explain how a transistor can be used as a switch in a circuit. First let's start off by describing what a transistor does. Transistors are the main building blocks of electronic components. There are probably billions of them in your own house, and a computer will actually contain millions of transistors. This is the circuit diagram for a transistor, and there are three main terminals, the base, the emitter, and the collector. To explain how the transistor works, you need to understand how these three terminals work together to create a switch. You can see in the bottom picture some actual transistors, and you notice how they have those three terminals. The use of transistors in electronics has led to some amazing technological changes. Not least is the idea of miniaturization. Miniaturization of electronics has many advantages and one key disadvantage. You need to be aware of these for the exam, so take a moment to read this table. So how can we explain how our transistor works? The first thing to realize is that the transistor is an electronic switch. It works by one circuit between the base and the emitter controlling the second circuit which is between the collector and the emitter. You will notice that this line or wire going into the base is labelled as the input. If the voltage between the base and the emitter is low, no current will flow through this part of the circuit and therefore no current will flow through the second circuit. If the voltage between the input, the base and the emitter is high, then this time a current will flow and that will switch on the secondary circuit and allow the current to flow between the collector and the emitter. So this input circuit could be provided by an LDR, like the one we talked about last lesson, and that way we have a very small voltage or current switching a much larger circuit. In this case, we'd be lighting a bulb. But the bulb would only light up if the LDR sends a signal to the actual transistor. So just to summarise, transistors are electronic switches. When the voltage between the base and the emitter is low or zero, no current flows in that part of the circuit. In a transistor, when no current flows through the base emitter circuit, then no current can flow between a collector and emitter either. So the voltage provided by the input, which could be an LDR in a potential divider, can switch the collector emitter circuit on and off. One final thing you need to know is how to calculate the current that's flowing through the emitter. Well, it's quite simple. If you have a current flowing into the base and a current flowing through the collector, then obviously the current flowing through the emitter will just simply be the sum of these two currents. That leads us to the simple relationship that the current in the emitter is equal to the current from the base added to the current from the collector. So here's a quick example of the type of thing you might be asked. The current through the base of a transistor is 0.5 milliamps and the current through the emitter is 0.2 amps. What is the current through the collector? The first thing to note immediately is the units of this value here. It's in milliamps. And the second thing to note is that they are asking you to calculate the current through the collector. So let's start by writing our equation down. The current in the emitter is equal to the current in the base plus the current in the collector. Then I put in our values. So we have 0.2 amps is equal to 0.5 milliamps plus our collector current. So rearranging the equation, my current in the collector part of the circuit is equal to 0.2 amps minus 0.5 milliamps. So for the final part of the calculation, I need both of these currents in the same form. I could convert them both to amps, but it's easier for me to convert them both to milliamps. So 0.2 amps is actually 200 milliamps, minus 0.5 
milliamps gives me my overall current in the collector as 199.5 milliamps. So finally, for the higher tier, you need to be able to explain how a transistor can be used to switch on and off an LED. So take a close look at this diagram. Here we have the LED over here. It's being switched by our transistor here, which is being controlled by our input here. The only significant difference between this diagram and the diagram we had earlier with the bulb is that we have a resistor R2 here. So I'm just going to explain why it's there. If the current flowing into the base is too large, then the base can become damaged, which obviously will stop the transistor from working. So R2 is simply there to limit the current flowing into the base. So with that in mind, take a moment to look at this circuit, and for the higher tier candidates, see if you can write down a short explanation explaining how this transistor is able to switch on and off this LED. When you've finished, compare it to my answer on the next slide and see how you got on. So here is my answer to the explanation for that LED circuit. Compare it to your own, note what the differences are and make sure that you learn them. And that brings us to the end of today's lesson. So let's just remind ourselves of what we set out to achieve. We wanted to know what a transistor is. We wanted to be able to explain how a transistor works. And finally, we wanted to apply our knowledge of that transistor and to explain how it could be used to switch an LED circuit on and off.